Good evening, all. Uh, welcome to our our budget uh, workshop over here at uh, Yeshiva Spring Valley uh, Girls. Um, welcome, community members. Welcome, Mr. Fetter. <laughs> uh, welcome, um, East Rappo team, parents, students, and, and staff. So tonight we're going to just go over some items that are pertinent to the upcoming budget vote, just to let the community know um, what uh, items are we're looking to um, finance and how it will help our district overall. Um, this will be brief, but it will be um, high leverage, and we're going to cover most all salient points, and we'll be open to questions immediately thereafter. So um, we have our fiscal monitor joining us by way of uh, Zoom, Mr. Singer. Hi, Bruce. He supports us in all that we do. We have our assistant superintendent for curriculum instruction, Ms. Ogechi Waha. Say hi, Ogechi. We have our assistant superintendent for secondary education, Dr. Augustina West. We have our interim assistant superintendent for business, Ms. Nally Espinal who will be speaking to us um, shortly. And we have our interim assistant superintendent for student support services, Ms. Jessica Alexander, as well as our assistant superintendent for funded programs, Mr. Daniel Shanahan. I don't think I left anyone out. We have our tech team. They're amazing. They support us in all that we do. And at, with no further ado, I'd like to bring up Ms. Nally Espinal, our um, oh, the clicker. We will get the clicker for you, Nally. Okay, here she goes. Thank you. Say it again? Oh, okay. Be, let's, let's go for it. Oh, so we have to go through our, yeah, vision and mission, right. Thanks for reminding me, Nally. Oh, uh, like, we, like we begin all of our um, community meetings, we, we, sh we begin these meetings by sharing our mission and vision statement. As a unified community, the East Rappo Central School District is committed to educating the whole child by providing a healthy, safe, supportive, engaging, and challenging learning environment. Our vision is that we'll become proficient in all that we do. So again, um, welcome for our, our budget meeting um, for Yeshiva uh, Spring Valley Girls. Um, this is um, a separate town hall we had set aside to share salient items from the upcoming budget vote um, that we'd like to share with all members of the community and in this instance members um, that are in the non-public school um, we've we've had this is our fourth fourth town hall uh, we have uh, one more in june and we're probably going to have another one in the area called a community called the hamlets because we want to just share as much information with the community as possible so um i think we're good right now and Ms. Espinel, it's yours the, the show is yours Okay, good evening everyone. Thank you for coming out. Um, you know, for the people that came out, every opportunity to communicate and to explain the budget is important. So we value this time. Um, so right now I'll go over some of the details of our proposed budget for the 23-24 school year. Um, so the first step in, in creating a budget for a school district is first estimating our revenues that we expect in the next school year. And right here we'll see the different uh, revenue items that are estimated to, um, to be received by the district next school year. I would like to highlight that the tax levy, uh, we're proposing a 1.99% increase. So that'll bring our tax revenue from approximately 154 million to 157 million. Uh, next item that is expected to increase quite a bit is uh, 40 million, approximately 40 million in state aid revenue. Um, this year we're receiving approximately 94 million and we expect that in the next year, um, according to the state information we have at this time, that it'll be a total of approximately $134 million. Our total um, expected revenue for 23-24 is a total of $298 million, million $698,680,118. Once we, once we estimate our total revenues for the next year, we have to uh, estimate our expected expenditures. There are various items that we must account for when looking into what 
the district needs um, are for the following year as it relates to our expenses. Many items increase according to how prices of goods increase over time. So um, goods increase food, the cost of food increases, the cost of transportation increases, um, contractors increase their prices over time, um, salaries increase over time, as well as the benefits that we have to provide to our staff. Um, so the larger expenditures that we have on a year-to-year -year basis are our salaries, as well as the benefits for our employees. And the large item on our expenditures are, and you see about four items from the bottom, we expect to spend 62 million in transportation costs, which is approximately 20% of our total budget. Um, for the next fiscal year, for the next school year, we, ex we are proposing $10 million in renovations to our buildings. Within the 10 million, you'll see later on in a detailed slide that I have, we include approximately 3 million to renovate playgrounds throughout the district. Um, so here, the 10 million within our budget and expenditures, um, that accounts for our expected expenses that we would that we would hope to incur in um, renovating our buildings across the district, our school, our 14 school buildings, as well as three million estimated for playground renovations. So every school district has to present a balanced budget, and that amount that we expect to receive and spend in the next year is balanced at $298,680,118 uh, for both revenue and expenditures. And this is some background on how we, um, according to the state, they have rules on the maximum amount that a school district can increase the tax revenues. And so our calculation, which is this dictated by the state, um, the, the district can actually raise its tax revenue by 4.56%. We are proposing a 1.99% increase in tax, whereas we can go up to an amount of approximately 7 million in additional tax revenue. We are only proposing an increase of 3 million in tax revenues. This slide here is an estimated calculation on how much the increase in tax revenue will impact the individual taxpayer. So we have, within our district, we receive taxes from the three towns, Clarkstown, Havistraw, and Ramapo. And this chart shows, you see on the side where it says monthly, it's estimated that a taxpayer will have to it's estimated that they will only have an increase of 10, approximately on average, $10 per month on their tax bill. Um, this is about 40 cents per day. And on a yearly basis, it may only be approximately $130 um, increase in the tax bill, the school tax bill. Um, over the past few years, uh, East Ramapo has kept the tax, le the tax levy at zero. Part of it was due to, um, most of it is due to uh, not enough support on the local level. So we need tax, we need the voters to support an increase in the tax levy. But over time we can see down where it's highlighted, in up on the top you see the tax amount has not changed in the past four years. But lower in the screen, the tax rate to the individual taxpayers has actually decreased because there are many factors besides the amount of revenue that the school district um, receives. There, there are many factors that dictate, that are included in the calculation for the actual tax rate in each town. This slide shows that the school district wasn't able to receive uh, 
increases in tax revenue over the last five years. And with that, there has been approximately $23.9 million that the school district has not received because of failed budgets, um, majorly for, because of failed budgets. So um, with local support, we hope to be able to um, have the revenue needed for the next school year. This chart here, and it's pretty small, shows that if we do not have an increase in our tax revenues throughout the next few years, by the time on the top line where the arrow is, you'll see that the tax levy remains at approximately 154 million. And that's with no increase in tax revenue. And as I explained before, year from year to year, the prices of goods increase, salaries increase, and various costs to the district increase over time. And when you look at 2028, it's potentially estimated that we can be in a deficit without local support of an increased tax levy. We can be in a deficit of approximately $44 million. So why vote? There's various reasons to support a school district. This proposed budget reinforces our commitment to academics, social emotional learning and operations to create the school that our students deserve. We have three areas of focus, our academics, our social emotional learning and our operations. Within social emotional learning and operations are the various um, improvements to the capital to our buildings that we expect to be able to um, provide in the next school year. So these were the main two um, budget presentations. Um, the second one happening today, as we like to keep everyone in the community informed. Um, feel free to send questions to the district, to the business office if you, if you need fur further clarification, and ask any questions you have tonight. So I would like to stress that May 16th is the budget vote. Um, who can vote? Citizens age 18 years or older that are resident of the school district for at least 30 days prior to May 16th. Um, registration is not needed if you voted in a school or November general election in the past four years and voters must vote at the poll location in the ward that they reside in. There's additional uh, information on the website. As you see, this is a screenshot of the website. Wards three, five, and eight are also um, having elections for their trustees. And I would like to stress that May 3rd, which is this Wednesday, is the last day to register to vote. And at this time, um, if anyone... Now, let, me, sure. let me go back a few slides. I just want to go over something with the, uh, the items that we'll be voting for that are actually up for... Um, keep going. Right here. Okay. So this vote, we're looking to make a couple of major, major um, purchases with the resources that will come from the budget vote. And within the area of academics, we're looking to continue our teacher professional development, Little things like that, like all our, our digital and print resources when we send mailings out to the community, the, all these things cost. Even a, a one regular mailing, the, the cost of postage is beyond belief. Um, also, we want to continue with our college accelerated courses, our honors courses, our, our advanced placement courses, our, our regents bearing courses, our summer um, uh, AP and honors prep program. That's something that we continue to finance. In terms of social emotional supports, which are critical since we came back from the pandemic, um, you know, that time, that year and a half, close to two years that we were home instead of in school, the, the, the children and the students lost a lot in terms of their, inter, their ability to interact. Um, these are, you know, interacting with others is a, is a skill, but it's something you have to continue to work on and practice. So that's something we're looking forward to. Uh, we want to continue to, to um, use our resources to bring in the quality school security agents, um, school counselors, mentors, um, looking at tr drug prevention programs. And the other big thing we really want to do is try to 
um, renovate all the playgrounds in our elementary schools, and that would be, that would actually be the cost of the entire um, uh, budget of 1.99 that we're trying to bring in. And under operations, we're looking to do all of the secondary gym floors in our middle schools and our high schools. Uh, because it's, an, it's not just a gym floor, it's required for instruction. Um, we're looking for uh, renovations and updates to our bleachers, our auditoriums. We're looking for equipment uh, around the district to be maintained and upgraded because as, if you have a, a building that's maintained and up, updated, it shows respect to the children and their community. So I think those are the things that are important. Um, you know, exercise your right to vote. Um, that's something that, as a, as a democracy, uh, a, a republic democracy that we are all, um, we fought for, our, our forefathers fought for, and I think it's just time that you, you exercise that, right? Don't, don't take that right for, for granted. So, Ms. Espinel, thank you. Um, oh, if we have any questions, we, we will we'll take sure. any questions if there are any. Are any. any questions? Anything at all? Revenue expenditure? <laughs> programs a anyone mr. Fetter any questions <laughs> okay <laughs> all right so a any questions no. you know I think it's important that um, they, we take this time to answer any of the well actually the, the 3 million of the 10 million is what what we're looking for in the 1.99 um, the rest of it is just things that we feel we've worked on over time mm -hmm. that we know it's time. Like if you go to the gyms, even after they sand and poly, you know you got to sand and poly them every year. They sand and poly the floors because these are the original floors. Within within around a month, it becomes the floors become slippery again, and that 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 becomes a health issue for our children that are you know our athletes, our students in phys ed. So those are the things we're looking for. The the bleachers, you know, they've been in in dire need for a while. Um, these are all the things we know we needed, but what we really want to hit with a home run if this, bu you know, if this budget passes are the playgrounds because the playgrounds serve all of our children, both public, private, year-round, you know, forever. If, if, they're, if, they're, if we get the quality, they'll last for years. So that's, that's the main thing we're looking for. I just want to add that um, some items in our general budget serve both our total, you know, community because transportation is universal. Um, so that provides um, transportation to all of our students, public and private. And our state aid, which is outside of the tax levy, um, is to support um, certain cat categories of expenses for all students, such as textbooks and, and aidable supplies for the instruction. We also want to continue to bring on additional social workers. At one point in time, this district had plenty of social workers. Um, so at one p years and years ago, I would probably say probably 2012, 2013, am I right, Dr. West? That was the time when it was a budget issue and many of the social workers and the support staff were excessed and laid off. Excess is a nice way of saying laid off. <laughs> but um, right now we have eight social workers that we've, we've brought back over time, uh, six of whom are bilingual, and we're looking to bring several more because we'd actually like two social workers in each of the high schools because they're big and then we want at least one social worker in every other building so right now it'll be two four and ten times one that should mean 14 so we're looking to hire six more over time and i think that that'll, that'll help our children feel supported people to go to in addition to the guidance counselors they have guidance is mainly to you know make sure that they're on track in terms of the courses they take but the social workers help with social emotional issues in terms of behavior and uh, supports for any kind of challenges our, our children face because adolescents do face challenges you know I know how I was as a teenager so I definitely could have used a few social workers but good question thank you any any more any other questions any no okay so um I Bruce maybe get Bruce, Bruce you have anything One second, Bruce. Go, Bruce. One second, Bruce. We're getting you. You're, you're incommunicado right now, Bruce. Go ahead, Bruce. Okay. Thank you, Bruce. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you guys. So I want to thank everyone for coming out. Um, again, we'll be doing something shortly within the next week or so.
um, in the hamlets. I think that's where's what, 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 what community is that located in? It's near Nanuet, the hamlets, but we will be presenting to a community there. Um, they have requested that we come out to to share with them, and so we're going to follow up. Um, and we just appreciate everybody's time tonight. Uh, we hope that this was helpful, and we'll continue to to share all the information that we can. Thank you. Thank you for. Um, make, make your time out of your schedules. Appreciate it. Right. I just want to add that all the budget presentations are on the website as well. Thanks again, and, and I hope everyone has a great night and gets home safely. Thank you.